Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of Iron Man's electronic motorised faceplate. Last time I made this helmet and I showed you the 3D printed mechanics, which are all the red pieces of plastic. And uh, basically I connected the servo controller to a computer to make the helmet go up and down. And this time I'm going to show you the electronics using the components I have in this bag here. So here are the components that are in the bag. This is a Pickaxe 08 Proto Board kit from Pickaxe.com. They also have, uh, it's a UK company, but they also have global distributors including Spark Fun Electronics in North America where you can pick these up and various others. Um, this is a microcontroller kit, which means we can program it with software on a PC. We can download the program and then we can leave the program to run so it doesn't need to be attached to a computer. There are other ways you could do this with, say, an Arduino, a basic stamp, a TI launch pad, or you could program a pick chip in Assembler if you wish to do so. Um, this is the, the cheapest way to do it and probably the simplest way to do it, where we only need to control one or two servos. I also have some additional components here. I've got um, a switch I pulled out of my spares box. I'm going to have one switch, so we press it once for the faceplate to go up and again for it to go down. And also have um, a piece of pin strip to connect the servo, which um, I desoldered from a board from a computer. So the power connector that's supplied with this, this is worth pointing out, it looks like one of the ones for a 9 volt uh, PP3 battery. In fact, this board doesn't run on 9 volts, it runs on 5 volts. So you either need to use, um, you can get away with three AA batteries of one and a half volts each, which would give you four and a half volts. In fact, I'm going to be using this battery box with four rechargeable AA's in, which are 1.2 volts each. So that gives me 4.8 volts, which is um, the nearest I can get to. So let's solder this kit together. It comes with instructions and there's also um, all of the manuals and instructions are available at pickaxe.com. The best way to solder, um, I've actually got a, a tutorial video in my channel, but basically you need to hit, I've already got the components here and I've bent the legs over, you can just about see them. So the best thing to do is put the iron on so it touches both the pad and the leg, heat it for a bit, apply solder till it flows around the joint, and then remove the iron. So iron on, solder on, solder off, iron off. And you should find these joints are nice and shiny. And that means they're um, a good solder joint, so I just need to fit the other components and solder them all on. And then we should be ready for programming. Okay, so I've soldered my board up, and I've got my batteries here, which are attached to the power pins. I didn't have any red wire, so I've used black and orange for the power. Um, the software I have here is Pickaxe Programming Editor, which is free software you can download from pickaxe.com. If we just quickly look at the settings, we should find that the pickaxe chip itself is set to the 08M2, which was the 8-pin chip, and serial port is set to the uh, USB cable that you buy for this. You can also buy a serial interface cable to go to a normal serial port, which is a little bit cheaper. So um, this is um, the programming environment. I haven't programmed anything yet, but I'm just going to program a blank program just to check that it communicates okay. So yeah, that appears to be all right, it's downloading. Um, and that tells me that basically all my solder joints are good and that I've connected the power correctly and the chip is in the right way round and um, everything else. There we go, so that's programmed successfully. So now we need to talk about connecting the input, which will be the switch, and the output, which will be the servo. All right, so here's the board. Um, I've soldered some wires onto my switch. I should point out this is just an arbitrary switch. You could use um, a different type of switch, and in the future I probably will. It's just one I've got for this demonstration, or in fact you could make the whole thing wireless and put the batteries in the helmet. For, the, for this uh, demonstration I'm not going to, I'm just going to basically show the basic principles of how to do this, rather than make the finished item. So that's on a rather long wire at the moment. Um, my piece of pin strip here is so I can solder that to the board, and then I can... Let's attach the wire from the servo, we'll plug in there. So, um, let's have a look at the manual. So I've got the interfacing circuits from the pickaxe manual, page 26, which shows you different types of switches. Um, obviously you could use any type of switch, and it shows a circuit there which has some resistors. So I've got some additional components here that I pulled out of my spares box. 
Uh, basically, what this shows is a 10k pull down resistor and the switch connected to an input pin on the pickaxe via a 1k resistor. So basically, this means that um, when you press the switch, it connects 5 volts to the pin through a resistor, which is for protection. Um, and when it, the switch is open, when you're not pressing the switch, um, the pin is pulled down to ground. So instead of just leaving it floating, it's actually either definitely, in fact, 0 volts or it's 5 volts and it's nowhere in between and that's the purpose of pull down resistors. You can do a pull up resistor as well. Um, we're going to go for the pull down version and then read the switch input when it's high. Page 19 shows how to control a hobby servo. Um, it's a bit more of a complicated diagram. The servo has three pins, red and black, um, we can see on here actually, has red, black and white. Red and black are power and the white or sometimes yellow pin is the data. So that's actually a PWM signal, which is a rising and falling waveform. And depending on how long the rising or the, the high section is, um, then in fact, I'll draw a diagram. So PWM is basically a square wave that goes up and down. And as the uh, the high section gets longer, um, basically, depending on the length of that uh, or the ratio of high to low, that will make the servo move. So that's basically telling it what position to go to. So um, uh, that's how a servo works. And the pickaxe is pre-programmed to be able to control servos. So this again has a 330 ohm resistor onto the data or the input pin. I think the nearest I could find was 150 ohms, which will be fine. And it also shows a uh, small capacitor, 100 nanofarads, which is the same as 0.1 microfarads, um, in between the power. And that's probably just for inter to suppress interference from the motors so that it doesn't affect the microcontroller. So um, basically we need to choose an output pin to control the servo, and we need to choose one input pin to read the switch input. So, uh, looking at the board, the pins are actually numbered along here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, pin 0 is also available, but that has a jumper, so it's either used as an output or it's used for programming, and this is in the programming position. We can use it for both by moving the jumper in between programming, but um, I'm just going to ignore pin 0 because I only need two pins anyway. So my circuit is all built up. Um, I've got my switch attached. And I've put this connector on for the servo to plug in. <clears throat> so let's just have a cl slightly closer look at that. So uh, it's very hard to see, but basically this is my pull down resistor for the switch, which goes between zero volts, which is this rail on the side, onto the uh, input pin one. And then this resistor is the 1K resistor that runs to the switch. This is the switch wire. This is the other one that goes to the positive rail, which is 5 volts along the other side. So that's basically the pull-down resistor diagram I showed you. Pin 2 I'm using for the servo. That's the actually 150 ohm resistor that runs to the white wire. And I've got my 100 nanofarad capacitor across the red and the black wire. And I've got a wire link here that takes the red wire up to... Uh, 5 volts and on the other side hidden under there is a, another link that takes the black wire down to 0 volts. So that's all wired up, um, everything's connected, now we just need to have a look at the code we need to program to make the faceplate open when we hit the switch once and when we hit it again make it close. Okay so I've written some really simple code to operate this servo with the switch. So here's the code, I'm also going to put this on my website, the link is in the description to this video. Uh, basically what we've got here are three sections, I'm going to start with the end two of them. So we've got one called close, we've got servo position and we've got pin two which is the one it's connected to and we've got a value of 235. So servos pretty much operate between 0 and 255 although they may not mechanically be able to reach the end limits. So through trial and error, I've worked out the close position is 235. Uh, within that section, we've got this switch section. And basically, that's a loop. 
um, that waits for pin 1 where the switch is connected to be 1. If it is 1, it does a 200 millisecond pause, which is one fifth of a second, and that is to give you time to take your finger off the switch. Um, it then says if the pin 1 is 1, then go to open, otherwise go back to switch 1, which is this. So it will keep looping back round until pin 1 is 1 and you've pressed the switch, and then it will go to open. And open is this label, which does exactly the same thing, only it sets the servo position to 90. That's for the open position of the faceplate. And then again it has this loop with the switch labels, waiting for the pin 1 to be 1 again. Um, and sending it to go be closed again if you press the switch. So at this point we can see why we've got these pauses, because if we didn't have them, um, basically this code executes very quickly, so you'd still have your finger on the switch by the time the code had executed and it got down to here, so the, the faceplate would um, sort of jitter open and close, it would try and immediately open as soon as you closed it. So we've got these delays here, so literally you have time to take your finger off the switch before the next bit of code executes. At the very start we've got a label called start which is where the program starts running um, and that uh, again sets the servo position to the closed position and you'll notice this command is servo, the others are servo pause and that's because you need one servo command to initiate the servo with its initial position and then the subsequent commands are servo pause to modify the position. So it starts uh, with the closed position with the servo command and then it says go to switch 1. So basically the, the faceplate is already closed at this point so we don't need this servo pause position. So basically it's sending you straight down here to wait for the switch input um, to open the faceplate. So as I say I'm going to put, um, I'll upload this actual file and put it on my website and put a link on the page which also has all the pictures and um, other bits and pieces for this project. Alright, so I've programmed up the microcontroller and this can now be disconnected from the computer and the program will still run. So I've got my switch here, so if I press the switch once, helmet opens, and if I press it again, it closes. And there we go. So look out for part three where I'll be dealing with the light up eyes and don't forget to subscribe.